Welcome back to Work Woman. It is a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. That is my sarcasm because it's not a beautiful day. However, it is a great day because I get to talk to you today and I get to share with you something that has been a journey of mine over the last two years. And oftentimes this podcast starts with me talking about this concept or getting really tactical with something that I'm learning or something that I'm implementing or a, a challenge that a business owner is having. But this podcast has kind of moved away from the things that I'm learning about myself and how I'm pushing myself and developing myself and truly leaning into my own personal leadership while I'm leading this organization and team members, et cetera. So there's been a couple things at play over the last few weeks that if you follow me on Instagram, which if you aren't following me, you totally should because I'm a hoot and a half on Instagram. So that's my own plug. There's two massive projects going on for us right now. One, I am writing a book. And when I say I'm writing a book, I'm actually finishing a book. The book will be finished this week. And the second is this leadership program that is a staple in our organization. It's a staple in the work that Brandon has always done and that I've contributed to over the last eight years of working together. Over the last two weeks for the leadership program specifically, uh, we shot the whole thing over the last over four days last week and there was so much prep and work that was put into it in the front end and the team that we work with is just incredible is an understatement but with that you know we're sitting here reflecting will and i uh because two years ago on my dream board on like oh this future state of natalie and by future like I don't know about you guys, but future states for me and dream boards, like they don't seem real, even though the whole point is to make them real. Like at the moment, they don't they don't feel real and they feel like they're 10 years away, not within reach, like really not within reach or else they wouldn't be goals, right? So anyway, I mean, two years ago, I could barely speak on a podcast. I started the podcast um, Age Gap Realness before this as a mechanism for me to get comfortable speaking because I was so nervous, I was so uncomfortable, I felt so inarticulate and really struggled. Uh, so you couple that with also wanting to always write a book. And back then I used to have this crazy idea in my head that if I wrote 1500 words a day, every single day for 10 years, guys, I was gonna write 1500 words a day for 10 years in order to be ready to write a book. Like, and I started doing this. This was about three years ago that I started this. And for six months, I wrote 1500 words every single day. Uh, I didn't know back then that 1500 words in like a chapter, a, a normal book chapter is about 2500 words. So I could have written and finished a book in the same time that I just practiced writing a book but I wasn't thinking with that. I was I was preparing myself to write a book, which is so stupid. There's just this convergence of things that are actually happening in real life that were things that I could have only dreamed of, but I really did dream of them two years ago. When you do the things that you always wanted to do, I do wanna prepare you if you haven't had this experience before. There's not like some moment where you're just like, wow, I've accomplished this goal and this is amazing and my life is set. I've never once had that happen after doing something that I've always wanted to do. Now, I feel very proud of myself. Like when I look back and I think it's important for, for you to hear me say this, I look back at myself and I'm like, I'm proud. There's like this feeling, there's this overwhelm of like, wow, I didn't think I could do this and I fucking did it and this is cool. But that moment is so fleeting because you're on to the next thing there. It's not just like, oh, I've just made it. There's, I've never felt that. And the successful people I've been around share a similar concept. Like Brandon has never felt, and he has accomplished so much. He's never felt like, oh, I've made it. But there is this, this sense of being really proud. And how can you in your own life figure out what you need to fix about what you're doing every single day and how you're spending your time in order to be proud of where you're you're putting that time and energy. And if you're not thinking about how to be proud of yourself, then you're just gonna be stuck constantly doing what you've always been doing and not getting closer to where you wanna go. And as soon as you get close to where you wanna go, where you wanna go will change. I can promise you that as well. But there's this, there's this idea of your own leadership is being proud of yourself and being proud of how you spend your time because it contributes to something that's bigger than just you. On my drive in this morning, I was listening to uh, a country station. Normally I'm like, you know, your, your hip hop, your early 2000s hip hop 
lady. But this morning I was listening to a country station and, oh gosh, who was it? Not the John Tucker band. That's like, I don't even think that's a real band. There was this song and I'm gonna forget and I've totally forgotten what the name of the band was. The chorus of the song went something like, you should be happy with where you're at and feel overwhelming contentment. I was like, man, I don't know about that because if I'm happy with where I'm at, I'm really being selfish. Like if I'm really happy, like I'm good. And the whole kind of vibe of the song was like, I'm good and life is good and I'm gonna appreciate where I'm at. And yes, like for a moment, that's fine. But I like, I got me worked up this morning a little bit because I don't want people to just be thinking, oh, I'm good. It's nice that you're good. What about everyone else? Where are you in the process of being able to be an example to other people? And where are you in the process of being able to support other people? Like your financial situation might be good. How's your parents' financial situation? How's your brother's financial situation? How are people in your life actually improving? How are you contributing to your community? Fuck, I'm good. With this whole concept of leadership and we've been recording this leadership content and it's just been really top of mind. And then I'm also writing this book that makes leadership even more top of mind. There's this constant reflection back of what am I actually doing to be this person? And if I can live into who this person is, how do I evolve her and take her to the next level as I'm achieving these things that I've always wanted to achieve? Because the, the reality is I'm not thrilled even today of like, there's still more, there's so much more I could do. But I wanna give you a couple of tips as I've gone through some of these things over the last specifically three weeks. And that is creating a plan and then working the plan. But first you have to have a plan. In order to have a plan, you have to have a goal to, to be able to get there. And that's what I've been learning with this book process right now. I've laid out every single chapter, I'm like, okay, this is what I want the framework to be. I've also told myself, I want to have started and finished this book within about a three week time period. I prepped some materials ahead of time and, and organized my like Word doc, but I really didn't go through the full blown, like I am sitting here writing until about a week and a half ago and I have a week and a half left to finish this thing. Every single day I am planning to go through, look at my plan. Is this plan still work? How can I pull things forward? Because you can create a plan initially and then realize, oh wait, I can do more. So let me pull this forward because there could be some things that are gonna get me off target. I'm heading to Florida tomorrow. Florida always takes me off target because there's there's different things that are happening there. There's different opportunities. We're looking at a building, we're changing homes. We have to move, like there's, there's barriers to the plan. So how do I take a plan? I'm gonna write this book. I'm going to parse out the pieces that it's gonna take. How many words every single day do I need to write? What content do I have to create in order to be set up for success when I'm writing it? And so every single day, I'm just looking at this plan. I'm planning, like there's there's the macro plan, but then I'm planning, okay, for this day, I have to do these pieces of writing. If I can grab this additional piece, I'm gonna to try to do that. And then I have to do this additional prep work so that tomorrow I can just get into writing very quickly. I was just having a conversation earlier with, with Will about the fact that because I've figured out this process, like now I know how to write a book. All of a sudden this is a new skill set that I have. Because I figured out this process, I'm like, I'm not even talking about the first one anymore. I'm like, I'm on to the second one. And how do I create content? Because I now know how to do it and I can do it more efficiently and I can do it faster. Sometimes it just takes a bigger picture, like writing four books in order for you to get the first one done, which was always the goal originally. I'm a big advocate of being proud of yourself, but there's no moment where you're just gonna sit back from a leadership standpoint and be like, wow, this has been amazing and I've finally made it. And I think that that's truly how great leaders evolve. Because if you all of a sudden were happy with where you're at, I'm 28 years old. I don't wanna be freaking happy with where I'm at when I'm 28 years old. Like I don't know anybody who should be happy with where they're at 28. I don't know anybody who should be happy when they're at where they're at when they're 80. Because there's still just like, there's so much, I have a full 14 hour day to day that I can still spend doing whatever I wanna do in order to contribute to something bigger. There's always more because there's so much wrong and there's so much opportunity for you to be able to fix those things. And so for me right now, I've really just been wrestling with these ideas of leadership and what these concepts mean to me in real life. As you speak to somebody on a camera or you're writing something through a book, there are certain authors or content creators out there who can write and talk and totally make stuff up and not actually live it. But because I'm 28 years old and I wanna make an, an incredible and a massive impact on the people that I love, but also people that I don't even know, 
I have to really wrestle with like, how am I living into these things and where am I falling short and how can I contribute more and just evolve. And so it's been an incredible, like I love to put some old clips of work women. I get every, or of he's 25 years older. I get uh, people who every once in a while are like, wow, I watched one of your first podcast episodes and you've changed so much and I, I freaking have changed so much and I'm so proud of that change and I'm so incredibly excited for what the future looks like. And I think that this is the real the, the real conversation that people who are evolving and growing and, and, and truly being examples, I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any means, but I've figured some things out that I know I used to struggle with and I would have wanted somebody to tell me what it felt like while they were doing it. I'm doing it, I'm in the process of doing it, and this is what it feels like. It feels like, wow, I've accomplished these things, but I'm not done yet, but I can still give advice because I'm further along down the path than I used to be. And so with that, uh, I so appreciate you for listening. I just, you know, this, this podcast for me is such a pleasure and such an honor to be able to impact anybody who's learning and growing, but specifically female leaders, as I wish that I had content like this, of like somebody really going through some of these pain points and being as insecure as I was and transitioning out of that. Uh, it's been one of the hardest things that I've ever done, but it's also created so much reward and benefit. And I can't imagine it any other way and just want this confidence for other people. There are so many things that I could be more confident in, but I've, I've made massive improvements. And my hope for you is that you're also able and willing to acknowledge that you are confident enough to do something more. That's the first piece of confidence. Like you can do more. You can have confidence that you can do more so that you can lean into the confidence that you need in order to create that action that's going to get you to that next level. I love, love, love my work woman audience. If you would share this, that would mean the world to me. Share it with anybody who you think, hey, you could you could use this right now. Review me, put some put some stars up there hopefully it's five if it's four that's okay if it's three like let me know what could i do better I'm open to your feedback and with that i hope you have a freaking awesome day